bonus scraps and I will be guiding you today through another advanced set of waveforms or oscillators in this case. Now I'm going to do a little bit of review that is what is an oscillator? Well an oscillator is a repetitional sound. A repetitional sound uh, is basically like a sine wave. That's what a oscillator is. It's a uh, type of waveform. A uh, waveform can, the four basic waveforms are a sine wave, sine wave, then you have your saw, then you have your square, and triangle. Then there's also white noise, or, uh, and your own user created samples. So for the different oscillators and different waveforms, um, last time I showed you how uh, FM modulation or frequency modulation can do to one can do to one uh, oscillator that does to another. Meaning that let's say I have a sine wave. And I drew a diagram of a saw. Let's see. Yeah, of a saw modulating a, uh, a sine wave. So for today, I'm going to show you how to create your own custom waveform, either by entering in it through operator or entering it uh, th through via text. Now when you export, uh, you can right click and export an AMS and it actually stands for Ableton Metasound instead of, uh, there's a, another term for AMS, it's a really old file type on a PC. So you can either, let's see, you can either draw in your notes either by 16 bars or 32 bars or 64 bars and draw in whatever you want that will uh, modulate the sound the different harmonics that's what these are they're different harmonics so other than that let me get rid of this I'm gonna show you how to create your own unique waveform and I'm gonna show you two ways of doing it you can draw it in operator or you can open up the AMS file. <clears throat> Excuse me, dry throat. It's uh, pretty cloudy today. Anyways, the second way of editing a waveform is through text. Now, I'm not sure, I just got into this. I'm not sure what all these parameters do. But as you can see, there are 16 different sine waves. These 16 different sine waves uh, represent uh, all of the waveforms in operator. It's quite interesting um, just to mess around with some of the parameters. Like for sine wave number 5, I'll put this at 0 0.05. For op uh, sine wave 4, I'm going to make this... 10 at the end, so I'm just going to put 1, 0. For the third oscillator, there's a whole bunch of numbers, so I'm actually just going to round that up to 15. And for this, I'm going to route this. I'm sorry, I'm going to type in the numbers. If you can't see what I'm doing, I'll zoom in. I'm going to type in the numbers 1 here, two zeros for here. And for sine wave number, let's see, yeah, sine wave number 16, if you actually think about it, a lot of our basic waveforms come from sine waves, just editing sine waves. So a triangle comes from a sine wave, a saw comes from sine wave, 
it's just edited with more harmonics or less harmonics. These are all the different levels. Let me show you. These are all the different levels of harmonics. By drawing in the number, it's pretty much the same thing as me. Oh. It's pretty much sa the same thing as editing one and two by drawing it. That's actually what's happening within the program. So let's see. I think I'll make this a five. Let me zoom out. Then I will save this. I'm doing a uh, command shift save so that way uh, you can do control shift save if you're on a PC. Um, there's two different ways of I already talked about that. Um, the only way you can actually edit this is through a text editor or a notepad if you're on PC. And when you save it, make sure to put, I'm going to change this to experiment two, make sure you put AMS afterwards. The reason why you want to use AMS is so that way you can re-import it back in operator. Uh, yes, I want to use AMS. Now, here's our experiment two. Let's see what it looks like. Let's see. Import. This is what it looks like. Put this at two. I have one experiment from before. Sounds different. So in order to drastically change it instead of just doing what I did, which is to round up all the numbers. Um, let's see. I actually want to try something. So let me open up, open recent. Uh, let's try my double saw. Let me zoom in so y'all can see. So I'm actually going to put, uh, there's, let's see, six places. So I'm just going to do one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm actually just going to keep going after this. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, then 11 will continue over here, then we have 12, 13, then we have 14, 15, 16, and so on and so forth. So I'm actually going to go through all of this and type in the next routing number, meaning I say, I say that a lot, meaning, <laughs> oops, that's supposed to be two, 20, 21. Okay. So what I, when I say what I mean by that, it's really, uh, another segue into further explanation. So you'll probably hear that a lot from me. Let's see, 24, 25, 26, 27. This is actually pretty boring. I'm probably just going to speed this up. 28 and 29. So, let me zoom out. I'm going to save this as experiment 3. Okay, cool. So now let's see what this, give it a second to load in. Oh, crap. Open recent. I forgot one. the number one rule is to put AMS after it. Yes, use AMS. Okay, now we should see it. Yeah, here it is. This looks kind of funky. So even through experimentation and text can prove some pretty crazy results. As you can see, there's a saw here, but then it has like another triangle waveform after it. So when you mess around with the text editor on an AMS sound, hold on, I'm on do C2 and F. No, here's F. C D. Yeah, F. 
That sounds a little bit gritty to me. So in order to make things a little bit smoother, I'm gonna change the repeat to four. That sounds a little bit better. Not quite as chunky, but not too hurtful on the ears. So for advanced waveforms, that's basically it when it comes to creating your own waveforms. You can edit them through operator. You can edit through uh, just drawing the notes. Like okay, I'm doing that. Oh, holy crap. That looks crazy. I want, I got it. I have to say that. <laughs> I'm going to use that. I want to call this experiment four. So probably um, later down the road, I'll make an uh, experiment. Uh, what is it? Zip file of all the experiment toll waveforms that I run into, even just by accident. So I'll probably upload that later down the road once my site is up, it's still in production. Anyways, um, another thing I want to talk about other than creating your own waveforms is to always, always, always limit your sound and make sure that your levels uh, if you're working in Ableton, that your levels are uh, pretty low. Because when you play notes at full volume, they're either going to be anywhere from 0 to 144 decibels. So though that can blow your ears. Uh, I think the most resistance your ears can put up, if you're 20 21 like me, you're ears can only handle 157 decibels before they explode or is it explode or implode I'm not sure but make sure you listen to sound and cover your ears if you're going to be an audio engineer or edit sound you need to make sure your ears are protected now I sound like a total square when I say this but it's actually very true you want to keep your sound as low as possible. So that way, when you master everything, you can bring up the levels and turn down your speakers. Uh, mastering is a whole nother bombshell of itself, meaning it's a whole nother can of worms. You could have a blue worm, a red worm, a pink worm. That's actually a regular worm, a white worm, whatever. What I'm saying that what I'm saying is that you need to protect your ears at all times, even if you're uh, vacuuming. Vacuuming, I think, has like maybe 86 decibels. 86 decibels is, let's see. Let me drag out my meters a little bit more so you can see that. The highest that goes in, in a... Uh, and Ableton is six decibels. However, you can push that way beyond its point. I would say if you're going to be editing sound to make sure you're at negative eight or negative six. So that way your ears are protected even when messing with sound. So thanks for joining me. I will be guiding you through next week on, let's see, synthesis. Uh, no, we just covered that. Um, I don't know. I'll probably think about it uh, throughout the week. Um, thanks for joining me. If you want to create a very crazy typed wobble sound, this is very, very critical for you to learn this. To learn to create your own waveforms. Because you can do crazier shit with it. Let's say I already have a, let's see, a growl modulator. But I'm going to use Wobbular too. So let me play a few notes for you guys. And uh, I guess that's it. I'll see you guys Monday. <laughs>